Welcome back to Nano Projects, and welcome back to our stock Miata upgrade series. Today we're going to be replacing the crappy top on our NA. It should be the same process as an NB. You can see this one's got all kinds of tears and rips, and the window's getting ready to fall out. It's in bad shape, so we're going to go ahead and get this removed and get a new top back on. So we start by putting the top down. we got to take out the rear carpet so we can get access to the rear tack strips. Got to hold the rain rail on. So we need to pop all of these trim clips out. We're gonna wanna use a tool, otherwise these things are easy to break. All right, so we've got five trim clips around here and then we got a couple in the back. Well, a couple of them are already missing, but these things are pretty easy to break. So you wanna try to apply even pressure. Then we've got a whole bunch along the backside here that we gotta take out. You can see this top's been leaking pretty bad because we have a, a petri dish for our back carpet. All kinds of mold and fun stuff. All right, and then back here, after you've got all the push clips out, there's these like frame stops. They're held in with a Phillips head screw right there. So we'll go ahead and pop that out. Hopefully it doesn't fight us too much with all the moisture. Okay, yeah, that's not coming out. Well, we should be able to get to the uh, tack strips, or I guess in this case it's the rain rail, without having to remove the carpet. Once the top's out, we'll probably want to take this thing out because it's nasty and it needs a clean. But we need to take all of these 10 millimeter nuts out, and that'll get the rear section of the top free along with the rain rail. All right, now that we've got all the nuts out, we can go ahead and pull the rain rail and the top frame out. So. This stiffener bar holds tension equally across the rain rail. So we'll pull that out. And then we can pull the top and the rain rail and you can see they're riveted together here. And pull those off the studs. But we'll also get the stiffener bars up from the sides. There we go. You can see our rain rail's all cracked, so we're gonna need to replace that. They get brittle with age. This one's really toasted. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the header rail. So we need to pull the top back so we can get access. This is the header rail right here. You can see it's held on with a bunch of Phillips head screws. We'll also go ahead and remove the four screws, two on each side that, that hold the rubber weather stripping on. These screws are the same, so can't mix them up. See, these do have plastic washers on them. All right, now we can pull our header rail off. See, now the top is free from that. Now on each side, we're going to want to remove the weather stripping here. It just pulls out of a channel. This stuff's kind of in bad shape. It's leaking water, so we're gonna do our best to save it. But worst case, you can get new weather stripping. I like to throw a blanket or a, a towel or something on either the hood or the trunk so that you can keep the weather stripping or whatever piece you're taking off on the right side. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to figure out what goes where if you just jumble it all up. So we do need to remove this weather stripping channel here. You can see the top is screwed into it. You see how that top is attached there. Do the same on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing to the rear section of the rubber seal. We're just gonna fold it back so we can get to the metal frame. Now if your weather strip's in good shape, it's not a bad idea to mark around the screw heads. You can see they left marks because the weather stripping frame has some adjustment to it and if you don't get it on right, you can have some leaks where, especially if you're reusing old but still in okay condition weather stripping it won't seal against the door as well as it could all right so here is the rear weather stripping from the other side we do want to remove it from both sides but you can see the bottom has these push-in fasteners so we're going to want to use our trim tool and you want to get it between the frame and the seal 
just carefully pry out and it should come pretty easy. Okay. All right, so now there's a screw in here on the bottom for this side that we gotta get at. You either get at it maybe with a stubby screwdriver. I'm gonna use this stubby screwdriver to get at it. A little awkward to get at it. And a lot of guys actually remove the whole frame to avoid having to get that this, but it's not too bad. So now we just need to remove the same screw on the other side. All right, so now we need to put our top back up and we've got two of those push-in retainers on either side holding the rain rail on. It's kind of hard to show, but it's right here at about this seam down. You can feel it. So we're gonna get our trim tool in there. So helping see right at about the tip of the tool is where the clip is that we need to remove. Kind of easier to feel than seal. Now if your rain rail was good and you're wanting to use it, then you're obviously gonna wanna be a lot more gentle than I'm being. But ours is junk, so I'm not really concerned about it. Okay, so it's free now. You'll be able to see in a second. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now that the rain rail is free of those push-in retainers, we need to drill out the two rivets on either side, and then we can get the top totally free from the frame. And we've got two more rivets holding the top to the frame. Yep. Do the same on the other side. All right, so now we should be able to roll this back over and show our listing attachments. That's where the top attaches to these bows. Here's our first listing attachment. Go ahead. All right, we're gonna go ahead and unzip the window out just to make it a little easier. We can also remove the header and the header rail. And you can see we're still held on with the cable, which attaches at the other side. So we're gonna need to remove the listings from the back on. See the tops just ripping, which is fine. Okay, now that we have the top lifts it up and over and again. free of all the listings we can go ahead and remove our tension cable so it's held on on the back here with this spring that's screwed on the frame we want to pull the top back take some tension off the spring go ahead and push the cable up through that hole. And then now we just need to get it free through the top. And now, our old top is completely free of the frame. All right, now that we've got the top material out of our way, we can get a little bit of a better angle of access onto these little stoppers here. So this one's coming out nice and easy. Now you don't necessarily need to do this unless you want to take the carpet out and clean it. You can see this one, because of the leaky top, has been growing some cultures, so definitely need to clean that. This one's a little crustier. All right, there we go. Now we'll give this a quick vacuum or whatever you want to do to it. And uh, we don't actually, we can leave the carpet out until we're ready to put it back in at the very end. To make it a little easier for us to get to the rain rail studs. You can see this car is actually white from the factory. I think it's been repainted twice, black and then this kind of cool green. But it smells pretty swampy down there with the vacuum sucking all the air out. 
All right, so we've got the well kind of cleaned out. Um, one big thing you want to do while you have good access is clean out the top drains. They get plugged up with gunk and who knows what over the years. And if you don't have them completely clear for water to flow through, then they plug up and water will collect around here and it'll wet the carpet and you can get rust and blah, blah, blah. So we're going to just run a coat hanger through and make sure we're clear. This should go all the way down to the bottom of the car. Feeling some resistance, but... Oh yeah, good look down here. You can see we have a, some compost coming out. Pretty good for the garden. Yeah. Gross. There you go, now the water's running out good. All right, so this is the perfect opportunity to lube all of our top pivot points. So we'll lube every bushing basically, anything that moves. I'm using white lithium grease. All right, so now we are basically ready to go ahead and start putting our top on. Let's get the new top out of the box along with the rain rail. Let's see what we're working with. So we went with the Sierra Tops rain rail and you can see how pliable this is compared to the other one night and day difference. It also came with these stud seals, which wasn't on there, unless I missed them before. And from the factory, the rain rail's riveted to the top. That's not really necessary. It's kind of just a thing at the factory to make installation of the top fast. So you actually can just emit the rivets. This came with these kind of like clamp studs just to help it hold onto the top. We'll see if we need to use them or not. All right, and then for our top, we went with a top from More Than Tops on eBay. I mean, it's not exactly a name brand top, but it's made in the U.S. apparently. It seems to be pretty decent quality, so we'll see how it holds up. A little cheaper than Sierra. And it has a glass window. We went with tan. You can see everything is already pre-drilled. So all the rain rail studs are already located to where they need to be. The Miata top is pretty easy to install compared, compared to a top on an older car where you've got, you've got tack strips and you staple the top to it. There's a lot of fitting and adjustment that goes into that versus this, everything's pre-located. So it makes it pretty easy. The only hang up is kind of just in getting the rain rail on. If you want to see the old style top and watch me struggle, you can go check out the LeBaron top. That's kind of a more difficult install process. This should go pretty quick. So the rain rail is directional. We want the larger kind of rubbery side out towards the back of the car. And then the top's gonna go get sandwiched in between these two sections. You see all of our holes line up, which is good. So this hole's for the stud that actually has the 10 millimeter nut. These two are for the rivets. All right, so I think we're gonna go ahead and use these little speed rivets or whatever they are just to make it a little easier on us when we're installing it into the car. Technically you can do it without, but we'll go ahead and use them because we got them. So you can see there's a bunch of different holes. The center hole is gonna be for the stud, obviously. So, and it's also the bigger hole. So you wanna make sure you're not putting the rivet through the wrong hole or else, well, you're gonna have to drill it out. All right, not really a huge fan of those push and clip things. I feel like a normal rivet would probably do better because it would then because it wouldn't pop out like these do so we'll see if this fights us on install kind of feel like it's going right, to so one last thing before we start getting the top on here there's a little bit of consideration if you're installing a one piece nb style top with a glass window on an na so these listing attachments aren't going to be used anymore since it's one piece and the nb frame is a little bit different than the na it's got a spring here that pulls this bow towards the third bow as you're lowering the top. The NA doesn't have that. This just, just, this just flops in the wind. So we need to install the webbing that came with our top. It's got an elastic section here. So it'll attach here and the elastic will pull the bows together just like on the NB frame. Now, if you have an NB frame and you're just installing a one piece top, you shouldn't need to do anything. You just install it as is and you shouldn't have to put webbing or anything. If you're installing, 
if you're installing an NA style top with the two piece zip up glass window on an NA frame, then your job's really easy. You just need to put the listing fabric back into the listing attachments here on the bows, here on bows three and four, and then you should be good. You shouldn't have to do any of the webbing. But if you're installing the NB one piece style glass window top on the NA frame, then you have to account for this. Otherwise your top is not gonna close right and it will put a bunch of stress on the window section and actually rip it. So we need to drill holes into both three and four and we're gonna rivet this webbing onto here. All right, so we're gonna use a 5 30 seconds drill bit. We're gonna drill two holes that are the width of the webbing here and here. So the webbing that was provided to us by this manufacturer is super tight. So it's actually gonna be kind of a stretch to get this to rivet onto here. So we're gonna, when we attach this, we're gonna to wanna to put the top down, but we need to make sure that we have our rivets in the right place. Yeah, that should do it. So this is where we want the rivets. Drill about here. So you want to drill through the listing attachment and also through the bow, not all the way. Just through the first wall. And we'll go right there. Then we'll do the same up here. Okay. So we want to make sure the rivet's actually going to engage into the bow. So I was just kind of tapping down the uh, bracket here. These rivets aren't super long, so. Now, I just have this test fit in the number three stud. Just want to make sure we have this attaching properly. Okay, so now we need to get a blowtorch and a screwdriver or something so we can burn the holes through our webbing to put our rivets through. All right, so I've got our webbing here attached to the third stud in. We're gonna need to drill five 30 seconds holes in the bows on the underside so that we can rivet our webbing on. So we're gonna fit it just to the outside of the listing attachment, which we aren't gonna use anymore. And it's gonna attach something like that. So we just need to figure out our approximate location so we can drill. Just about there should do it for us. All right, now we need to poke our holes through the webbing. So I'm going to figure out what location we're putting them on. Right about there should do it for us. So I'm just going to heat up this punch and that will melt the fabric and make it so it doesn't fray. If you try to like cut through it or whatever, it's not going to work very well, so it's really windy. But I'm just going to heat this up for a while until it's nice and hot and then we will burn our holes through. Okay, now we can go ahead and rivet. All right, now we just gotta do the same exact thing on the other side. All right, both sides are riveted. 
Now we can get to our main event, which is putting the top on. So we can go ahead and set it into place now and start getting everything back on. Okay, so now we're gonna drape the top on over the frame. Uh, we're gonna wanna be careful not to pop these little dinky rivets. Go ahead and thread our tension cables through. You see, this top has a hole cut out here. All right, so I'm kind of a dummy as usual. These are actually speed rivets, so you're actually supposed to pound them together, and you can see where this pin's already a little deformed. It collapses and it acts like a normal rivet. So I think we're just gonna not bother with it because it's gonna be kind of a pain. We'll just put the rain rail on without rivets like I was talking about. So for now we can get it out of the way. When we're ready to bolt the rain rail down, we'll go ahead and slide it on first and then we can slide the top into the groove while it's in the groove. All right, so next we gotta get the B-pillar sections riveted. We have the two rivets for this under the weather stripping retainer and then we've got the two way down here. So the top has this kind of pocket right here that we got to slip over and around this. So we're going to need to put the top frame up and try to slip this under. Okay, so it's kind of a struggle to get it up in there, but once you have it seated in the pocket, it'll look like this. You see all of our holes are gonna line up. We're gonna have to punch through the top. Actually, looks like the holes do line up. They're already punched. It's just a little off kilter. But the holes will line up, and you can see if we put the top back just to here, that that metal piece is resting in that pocket on the top. So now we'll put the top back up. You want to fold this over so we can get access to the rivet points down here. So you can see where we drilled out the rivets and the holes that we need to rivet now. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, we moved inside because it's so crazy windy outside. Uh, we need to put the top back up and we can rivet in that. I believe these are five thirty seconds rivets, but really it's just use whatever fits the tightest in the hole. and get the other side done so that when we fold it down, we don't need to worry about lifting it back up to do this one. All right, so now we're just gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and rivet in the B-pillars under the weather stripping retainers. So before we rivet in this section of the top that goes under the B-pillar weather stripping retainer, we need to route our tension cable. And you can probably do this earlier, make it a little easier on yourself maybe, but we will do it now. Put the frame up, give us a little more slack. So it goes down through here, we're gonna have to push the fourth bow back a little bit. We'll go down there and screw into it, screw. All right, so we have our tension cables in. You'll probably have a little easier time if you do it before riveting those two. It's not bad either way, but uh, now we're ready to rivet in to the B-pillar. So if we look at the frame itself, you can see these little plastic inserts are where the screws go, and these two holes are where the rivets go. So we need to put a rivet through this hole, into that hole, and so on, so. So this top, the little plastic reinforcement, doesn't quite line up with the hole, so we're gonna have to manhandle it just a little bit, but you can see now it's through, so it's not that bad.
There we go, same deal on the other side. All right, now we'll go ahead and fold the top back. I wanna make sure that the window sits back like it should. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put our header rail on. So you see the top already has holes for the header rail. So we're just gonna get the weather stripping retainer and we'll screw that back into place. Okay, now we can get our header rail on. So that piece, we just wanna line up our holes with those holes. And it takes these black screws with the little plastic washer on them. I just want to get them all started first, then we can tighten them all down once everything is together. Okay, now we can go through and snug them all up. Alright, now we can get our bead pillar clips back on. So you just sit in here. Like that, and they kind of pull this little piece over and tuck it away. Then we've got the one screw that goes down the center. So you can see our retainer has the two holes for the weather stripping push-in pins. The screw goes in the center one. So pretty self-explanatory so, there. It's fine. Get it on us. Okay, now we can go ahead and get our B-pillar seal retainer back on for both sides. So it's good to try to line up the screw head with the witness mark on the seal. Like I was saying before, if you don't get it quite right, then it's not gonna seal properly, but we can always adjust it later if we need to. Now we'll put the top up and we can do the frontmost weather stripping sails. So you can see our top actually doesn't have the holes drilled or marked for our front weather stripping retainer. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we have our top in position before we go ahead and make the hole for the retainer. We're also going to probably want to use some contact cement just to make sure that we have a little bit of extra grip. All right, so for our front seal retainer, we're also going to take care of this flap right here. We are going to want to use contact cement. We'll use it both up here. You can actually see we had some kind of adhesive here before. Uh, along with right here. So we're gonna apply rubber cement to both of these and we are going to let it tack up. And once it's tacked up, we just wanna make sure that this seam is following the same path as it is from the retainer. Otherwise, if you don't do it, then you see the seam just pulls out. So what we'll do is we'll make sure it's glued in place. And we wanna make sure that this seam here is on the edge. And then when we close it, you can see the top looks good. It's popping out because it's not glued, but we want it to have that same look. So I'm just gonna use this Weldwood contact cement. Definitely wanna be careful with the dripping. All right, now we'll let that tack up for a few minutes. We can get everything where it needs to go. So you can see the cement's kind of holding us in place there. So 
wooden thing over here. All right, we can go ahead and drop our seals back in. All right, now we do have our screws for this seal up here. We can also go ahead and put our B pillar seal back on. Remember, it does have these push-in pins, so probably wanna take a pick or something and make sure that the holes that they push into is clear. All right, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now we can go ahead and get our listing in. This is on the second bow. So we're gonna need to start by prying the listing retainer out just a little bit. And now we just wrap the listing around and then we put the seam down into the listing retainer. All right, now that we've got the listing retainer all the way clamped down, we're on to the main event pretty much, which is the rain rail and the back studs. So let's turn our attention there and get the back bolted on. So if you're working with an NB top that's a little bit different style than this, you might have one really long flap that goes over all the listings. In that case, I think it starts here and you wrap it all the way around and it still clamps into this one. If you're working with a standard NA top, then obviously this listing also gets clamped into the top along with the third or the fourth bow. This one, you just have the one listing and the other two are held in place with that elastic and a webbing. All right, so we have these little foam stud seals that we need to put over all the studs before we get the rain reel on here. So they just push on like that. Not a whole lot to it. Now we get our rain rail slid over all the studs. Remember that at the end, either end of the rain rail, there's a big opening and we have one of these little push-in clips to push in. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Kind of hidden in there, you just gotta do it by feel. Okay, so we'll just wanna make sure that our rubber end is tucked under the seal. Now we are good to get the top in. The top gets sandwiched in between these two layers. So it's gonna be a little bit of a pain, but we'll work our way around and get it sandwiched. All right, so we're just gonna work our way around. In here, kinda hard to show, but you just gotta feel, you gotta spread the rain rail, get the top and sandwiched in between, and then line the hole up with the stud. Now we're gonna wanna put the top partially down, because obviously when it's all the way in the up position, there's gonna be a lot of tension on it. So. If you could find a way, either get a helper or f figure out some kind of way to prop the top partially down, partially up, this is gonna be a lot easier. So, so we're gonna work our way around and get the top sandwich in between the rain rail. All right, now that we've got the top sandwiched and over the studs, we need to put the rest of our little foam ceiling washers on the studs. And then we can put the stiffener plates over and actually start snugging all the nuts down. There is a specific order that you want to tighten them all down. We can flash it up on the screen. If you're tall, it'd probably be worth it to pull the seats out. It's just four nuts. All right, you can't forget if you have the same setup as us, you got to put the webbing around the third stud in. So counting from the first one all the way towards the front of the car. That's one, then two, then three. And we'll put that inside the ring rail. And you wanna make sure you don't have it turned. We can get the center plate on first before we do that. So you can kinda of see how the rivets would make life easier, but you can do it without.
We may need to leave out the foam washer on that one because of the extra thickness of the little brass ferrule or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we're going to snug down all the nuts. You kind of go side to side, middle out. We'll post the uh, a picture on the screen now. But you don't need to go crazy tight. Just snug them up once they, you know, just snug, basically. All right, you got to kind of embrace the suck on that. You just basically just got to power through it. But now we are ready to actually close the top. So we're gonna see if we can close it as is. Probably we're not gonna be able to because the material is gonna be so tight. So you can see we've got these hex adjustments on the latches. So we may end up needing to turn them all the way out and just still get it to latch for now. And as the material stretches over time, we can tighten those adjustments up. So we can go ahead and start closing. You see our bow, our fourth bow is coming all the way back, which is what we want. And yeah, as expected, we are rather tight. So we're gonna turn these adjustments all the way out just to keep us from stretching the top too far. These are 10 millimeter. Now, more than likely, you're probably gonna need a hand to close this. It's gonna be tight. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, we're closed. And see, we've got wrinkles on the quarters. So that's normal. The wrinkles are going to work themselves out over time. Um, it's ideal to do this kind of in a hot weather environment, good sunny day, and these wrinkles will lay out over time. Really typical. If you really want to get rid of them fast, you can use a steam machine and steam them, and it'll probably lay out right away. But let's pull this thing out and do a quick walk around and see how we did. All right, so I'd say overall we did pretty dang good. These little points are actually part of the frame. The top is reinforced there. Not a lot you can do about that. That's just kind of how it is. Um, like I said, there's a couple loose spots. A lot of it will lay out with, with some time. We'll see how much better this gets right here on the quarter. We may end up needing to adjust one of the rain rail strips over just a hair. We'll see how it does. And one thing I'm not super happy about is the slack on the header right here so that's kind of a function of how the top was cut how the holes were drilled there but we should be able to adjust it by loosening the header rail and pulling down a little bit we may need to lengthen the screw holes in the top we'll see how it lays out with a little bit of time that's an easy adjustment you literally just loosen the screws pull the top tight while it's up a little bit and then you should be off to the races so Overall, I'd say we're doing pretty good. Go ahead and pull our window plastic off. Nice clean window with fingerprints all over it. So, so I'm expecting that to all lay out. Um, now is the time where you probably want to put some kind of conditioner or protectant over the top, especially if you're storing outside. And you're probably going to want to leave the top up for a couple weeks just to let material stretch to where it's going to be if you're putting the top up and down all the time right after installation you can run into some issues. Last thing we're going to do is get the carpet back in and then we should be good to go. Our carpet's so nasty we're going to get a replacement so it's literally just the reverse of install you just place it in there and put all the clips in. Easiest buy. If you could get to this point then you can do that. So. All right so you do want to test to make sure your top goes down. It does um, for us but because we've got kind of the hybrid setup. The elastic doesn't quite do the job it's supposed to in pulling the bows together. I was messing with it and pulled it out of the rivets. We'll drill them out and put washers over that to spread the load out and re-rivet it. The elastic doesn't have quite enough tension to pull the two bows together and they really need to pull together in order for the top to go down. It won't go down if they don't pull together. So what we may end up doing is adding some more elastic or something but every time you put the top down as you lower it just pull the bows together and it'll go down fine. So not a huge deal. That's just something to be aware of if you've got this kind of hybrid setup of the NB top on the NA. But other than that, not a big issue.
overall this job wasn't too bad for a convertible top. It'd probably be doable in, I don't know, three or four hours. Good time to work. Uh, worst case, it might take you a couple days, but overall it's not bad. It's pretty easy as far as tops goes. A crappy top's kind of a big thing on kind of base model, cheap Miatas. So, so if you can replace the top yourself, you'll save a lot of money and you'll make the car look a thousand times better. Now that we've got the limited slip differential in here and the top on, it's a whole different car. Next time we're gonna be changing out this 1.6 for 1.8 and that's really gonna change the personality of this Miata. So I will see you guys then and until next time.